OCR GCSE Computer Science, Episode 5, Secondary Storage. So in any key component, any key computer, there are four key components, which all have subcomponents. So you've got the CPU, the inputs, the outputs, and the storage. Now we've already covered the CPU, and in this video, we will be covering storage, particularly secondary storage. Now, in episodes one to four, we have learned about three different types of memory, random access memory, virtual memory and read-only memory. But because these are all classified as memory, they either are only a temporary store, or if they're not temporary, you can only edit the con you can't edit the contents. So we need a form of storage that lets you both store the data when the computer's turned off, but also allows you to edit the data. And we call this secondary storage. So there are three different types of secondary storage devices that you need to know. There's magnetic devices, solid state, which is also known as flash memory, and optical memory. So let's begin by looking at magnetic devices. So magnetic devices are things such as hard disk drives, HDDs. The, these use magnetic fields to magnetize tiny individual sections of a metal spinning disk. So each tiny section represents one bit, and a magnetized section represents a binary one, and a demagnetized section represents a binary zero. Now these sections are so tiny that one single disk can contain terabytes of data. So in terms of advantages and disadvantages, you need to know that magnetic devices have a very high ma memory capacity because of how small the magnetized sections are. And in terms of disadvantages, the moving head, which reads the disk, is vulnerable to magnetic fields and is also easily susceptible to damage. So it's not really that portable. Now, in terms of knowing how it works, you don't need to know too in depth about how magnetic storage works. You just need to know the advantages and disadvantages and comparing it to other devices like solid state. So solid state devices use non-volatile random access memory, which means that when you turn the computer off, it will st the data will still be stored and it stores data indefinitely. They tend to have a much faster access time than any other type of device, and because there are no moving parts, they are more durable for being portable. So in terms of advantages and disadvantages, they require very little power, it's portable, and it's quite durable. But in terms of the disadvantages, it's expensive and tends to have a smaller capacity than something like magnetic storage. And finally, let's look at optical memory. So optical devices use a laser to scan the surface of a spinning disc, and this will be made from metal and plastic. Now the disc surface is divided into tracks, and each track contains many flat areas and many hollow areas, so pits and lands. And the flat areas are known as land, and the hollow areas are known as pits. So the laser reads and sees if it's look according to the depth, then it will act as a one. If it's deep as a hollow, act as a one, or if it's flat, it will act as a zero. Now, in terms of the advantages, it's lightweight and portable, but the disadvantages is that any type of disk like this can lose its data when the surface is scratched, and unfortunately, it doesn't hold as much data as the other two we've looked at. Now let's look at some exam questions. So outline the advantages and disadvantages of magnetic storage for data backups. Pause this to have a go at this full marker. Now let's look at the answer. So advantages include that it has a larger data capacity and it's cheaper. It's also got a higher read write speed than hard disk drives. But in terms of disadvantages, it takes longer to find a specific piece of data and data can be completely wiped out by magnetic fields. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did find it helpful, make sure you subscribe to Knowable GCSE and Knowable A-Level and have a good day. See you soon.